In the last video, we introduced the second postulate of quantum mechanics, uh, relating a physical observable of a system to a corresponding Hermitian operator. We also went through a couple of important properties of Hermitian operators, namely that their eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real and that the normalized eigenfunctions of distinct eigenvalues are orthonormal. Another property of Hermitian operators is that their eigenfunctions form what's called uh, a complete and orthonormal basis set. So, um, just to refresh your memory, uh, we had associated a value to a physical observable Q for a given operator capital Q hat by the following eigenvalue equation. We said that this cat was an eigenfunction of the operator. And this Q is a number that corresponds to the value of the physical observable. And orthonormality for a discrete spectrum uh, meant that the inner product of two eigenfunctions satisfies the following property where this is the Kronecker delta. So it's either one or zero, depending on whether i is equal to j or not. We'll see in a later video what happens when the spectrum becomes continuous. You have to change the definition a little bit. So uh, this is uh, what orthonormality means for us, uh, but what a basis set means which will denote like this. Uh, the consequence of this is that we can write the state of a system any state, a general state, which will denote by psi, uh, cat psi, has a superposition of the eigenfunctions of our operator. So for a disc uh, discrete spectrum, This means that uh, this can be written so it's a, a linear superposition and this in general can go up to let's say n eigenfunctions. Okay, a more familiar example of a basis set is for example in two dimensionals the i hat and j hat unit vectors. Uh, you can express any vector in two dimensions as a linear superposition of i hat and j hat. Uh, this is a bit more abstract. Uh, this just says that for eigenfunctions of an operator, we can express any state of a system as a linear superposition of these vectors, so to speak. Uh, an important point in quantum mechanics is that uh, and it's allowed to go to infinity. So you can have infinitely many eigenfunctions in general. And uh, the this number CI over here is uh, given by the inner product of the corresponding eigenfunction with uh, cat psi. So it's just the, you know, the inner product of an eigenfunction with the vector that you're trying to express in terms of the, the basis set. In quantum mechanics, this is usually called a probability amplitude. And it just tells you how much of QI is inside of your state cat psi. 
Okay, so this is uh, an important point. Generally, for problems in quantum mechanics, you want to find the eigenfunctions of uh, an operator corresponding to an observable you're interested in. And then, in general, the state of your system is a superposition of all of these possible states. And the CI gives you, is will be related to the probability of finding your state in a particular eigenfunction of that operator. And we'll see that in the next postulate. Uh, the term completeness here, so having a complete basis set, means that uh, if you add up Uh, this quantity. So the cat is now acting on a bra. Uh, this gives you the unit operator. Okay, by unit operator, I mean that uh, if this acts on some cat Q, it just returns that same Q. So this is analogous to the identity matrix in linear algebra. Uh, and this is for a discrete spectrum. And we'll see later on that this quantity is actually an operator in itself. Um, but to see why this is true, so this is a proof, if you will. We start out from uh, our expression for uh, cat psi. And we had said that these numbers ci, so these, remember, these are complex numbers. This was equal to qi psi qi. And because this quantity is just a complex number, we can move it around. It has to remain in the sum because you have the index here, but we can translate that to the other side. Because this is complex number. This over here remains a complex number. And this, uh, this is an important part of this bracket notation. It's not just notational convenience. The order in which the bras and the cats appear actually makes a difference. So you can uh, think of this as Uh, the cat, this cat acting on this bra. And because this doesn't have any index, we can actually take it out of the sum. So you can separate the sum of this quantity in terms of this. And what you see now is that cat psi is equal to some quantity times cat psi. So this quantity has to be equal to the unit operator. And this is where this property that we're going to call completeness comes from. It also illustrates a little bit of the algebra of the bracket notation, where the order matters. And just because these started off together doesn't mean that you can't separate them uh, later on, as we did over here. Okay, so this, uh, using the second postulate of quantum mechanics, we also explored some properties of the spectrum of Hermitian operators. Um, and the uh, what it means for a basis to be complete and orthonormal. In the next video, we'll begin looking at the third postulate of quantum mechanics.